Uh, we're gonna change this master and slave cylinder on this G35. Why are they have, painted? Like, this is aluminum, it won't corrode, but these come in not painted at all, just so it won't rust. Cool. I want to say this. <laughs> You're supposed to use a line wrench on this if, they've ne if they haven't recently been removed or if they've been over tightened. But I have recently had this off and I know that this is not going to round it. Otherwise, I would definitely be breaking it loose with a line wrench first. All right, so it's broken loose. I need to get the stuff from the firewall. Unbolting the master cylinder. First off, I'm setting up my free Harbor Freight flashlight. It was easy to turn, and now it got hard to turn. Okay, pulled the stud because it's cheap. Okay. Yeah, but I'm also gonna take a vacuum cap and a cap the line coming. The hard line that goes through the slave. Oh. Oh shit. Didn't mean for that to drip there. I'm just swapping the uh, reservoir over to the new master okay. first. Right. But since I got fresh fluid in there already, I'm gonna hold it this way so it doesn't drain and try to swap it. And, well, it's supposed to be holding fluid without losing all of it. It's not working very well. If you'll notice, we've been through a few of these. <laughs> Don't buy them from the parts store. Where, where did you get this one from? Uh, I actually ordered this one through Summit, but it was basically for the shipping time that I thought was going to be quicker. It wasn't. Uh, Rock Auto sells it. This is Centric. Centric. Which is owned by StopTech, I believe. Okay. It's just, it's manufactured elsewhere, but they're relabeling it as theirs. And I have this one on the 350Z and it worked great the first time. And there's actually a problem with the piston inside of these here. It goes too deep in the cylinder and it's actually losing its prime after you prime it up. So what's the guy at the parts store? And it ends up putting, uh, what's it called? You call they it They say, vacuum. yeah, well, well, that's what I'm being told. I don't know for a fact, uh, but somebody said that it's most likely making it making it pull a vacuum rather than put pressure. So I know this one's good because this is one I have on the Z and that's what we're going with. So now that we've made a huge mess on the floor. Shh, I didn't show her. <laughs> it's okay, I'm not ashamed. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. O'Reilly. We'll turn it that way, they're not paying us yet. Don't leave that All right, so when you have a fresh master cylinder, just like with the brakes we were working on the other day, it's got air in it. We've got to go ahead and get all the air out of it. Otherwise it'll never prime. If you put it on and connect the line and try to prime it on the car by bleeding it at the bottom, it's never going to get a prime. So you have to bench bleed it or prime it in a vise before. You don't have to have a vise. You could hold it by hand, but it makes it a lot easier. I basically just prop the reservoir bracket up here on this jack handle for now. But what you're going to do is get this little adapter that usually comes with them. I don't know if it really does anymore. That lets you screw this in and put a vacuum hose on it. And I'll run that back to the reservoir. And that's basically just going to purge all the bubbles out of it. This 
hose is going to go in the bottom. Make sure that it's in the fluid and not above the fluid. Right now this is empty. So you'll see when I fill it up, if you want to come in closer, Carl. Now, since this is a remote mount reservoir, there's also going to be some air in here. Usually, maybe not this time because we already had fluid in it. So all I'm doing is just the same thing that the pedal would do, pushing it all the way in. And that's pushing everything in the cylinder into the reservoir. And you can see the bubbles coming out and rising to the top. And now they're out of the system. You're going to do this until you're not seeing bubbles anymore which was the issue with the old one. Now this thing doesn't have to be 100% air free to have a prime. Okay. So, and it's not gonna be usually until you bleed it, finish bleeding it all the way down. Now all the bubbles are out of the cylinder. I'm gonna carefully Take it back over to the car. The most important thing about this is to not let this run dry because if it lets air back in on this side, then you're back to point zero, you get to start over again. So make sure that you're not losing this or spilling it. Some is gonna run out of here when you're trying to connect the line. You need to do it quick enough that this does not run dry. I almost feel like the reservoir being remote is a benefit because this is long enough I can move it out of the way while I'm reaching down there to connect the line. This car is kind of a pain because the ABS block is right on top of this. I'm left-handed, so it's really hard for me to get my hand in there. Getting the line started is probably the most difficult thing. Go ahead and slip it through the firewall and don't worry about the bolts inside at first. Get your line started first and get it tightened down so it's not leaking and then go inside and start tight assembling that portion. Another question, what, what's, why not bench bleed on the car with the pedal? You can, this guy here, you saw how I had to tighten it yeah. because it was letting air pass by when it was loose. So once you put this master on, it's really hard to get this thing out of there by hand. You know, if you, I guess if you had the right, yeah, on this particular car, it's just hard to get this unscrewed from it. Now you'll notice before I take it off of the vise and take it over there, I'm gonna go ahead and pre-loosen it so that I can, I know that I can get it by hand because I've put them on before and reached down in there and not been able to. Honestly, you could probably just get the right wrench size or. You're not going to fit a pair of pliers in this one, but that's if you have, I'm using a short wrench to be able to get to it. That's if you even have a wrench short enough, that's the right size. So hope, you know, in theory, most people should, I should, I probably don't. <laughs> Damn it, Jeff. <laughs> and, and the big problem with brake fluid is it eats so, paint. It's paint. Yeah. So my Jack that it just splattered on, it's brand new. It's probably going to have paint peeling off of it soon. Now I'm going to go in the car and go ahead and get the fork around the pedal. Okay. So I don't have to worry about that later. Okay. So what were you just doing? The fork, I was making sure that the clutch pedal was inside of it because there's usually not enough room if you get it on one side or the other once you get in the firewall without unbolting it and pulling it all back. Take this off. Right now this is keeping the fluid from going through because it's up higher than the reservoir. But when I unscrew it to swap it, the line to it, so, this is gonna start leaking through. So I wanna go ahead and top this off first because I know I'm gonna lose some. And I don't wanna run out of time before it runs dry and have to take it back to the bench and start over. There we go. Okay. This is that part I was talking about that's hard to get out. All right, so now that I have the line tight, it's not gonna leak through anymore. I can go ahead and start fixing the uh, reservoir in place and finish putting the hardware under the uh, firewall. Yeah, you're supposed to be doing it by hand. You should be able to do, get it all the way snug and then do a quarter turn to tighten it. So if you start it and it's like really tough from the get-go, you're cross-threaded, you're gonna strip it if you just keep putting a wrench on it then. You need to be able to go all the way down by hand. You 
Now we're gonna go back under the dash and assemble all that. Because the studs weren't screwed finger tight all the way into the new master. Oh, they're just on assembly line. They don't, they, they expect the mechanic to be checking the parts. Okay, so now that we've made a mess in here with the brake fluid that we spilled, trying to put it in, I'm gonna take some brake parts cleaner before we go down to the slave and go ahead and get this off of the paint so it's not eating the paint. If you leave this on here for say 10 minutes or so, no big deal, but if you leave this on here for 40 minutes or an hour, it's gonna start breaking the paint down. If it doesn't come off right away, it will soon after. So we're just gonna make sure we clean this up real good with some brake parts cleaner, and then we'll move down to the bottom to the slave cylinder. Make sure not to get brake parts cleaner on your Harbor Freight light because it will destroy it. Oh, you bumped that, another light bulb came on. Did you see that? <laughs> yes, it was excessive. I like my paint. I want it to stay. Mm -hmm. 